Welcome to the nation's first solar hydrogen fuel cell powered home in North America. This home's been off grid now for 16 years and uh, we're using the power of the sun. I've had no electric bills and I do cooking gas, heating gas, fuel for the vehicles, lawnmower, etc. all from solar hydrogen I make three months of the year. There are two sources of energy that power this place. One is the solar energy, obviously, and the other one is geothermal, we grab from the ground. In three months, we make all the energy we need. So all the solar panels around here from April to about June goes into an electrolyzer that splits water into hydrogen and oxygen. That hydrogen and oxygen is then stored in these tanks forever. Whenever I need to use it, I pull off of the hydrogen, I run it through the fuel cell, I get the water back, the electricity, and then that water goes back to start all over again to make more hydrogen. Solar energy's been around for quite some time. The biggest problem with solar energy is you can't store it. This system essentially bottles sunlight to use whenever you want, weeks, months, years, centuries from now. This is the only technology I've seen that can actually turn the ship around and go the other way and keep us from going off the precipice or at least slow it down. You've just seen where we stored the hydrogen and where we generate the electricity from the solar panels. Now we're in my shop where all the magic happens. These are storage tanks, so we're storing the hydrogen in with something called nickel metal hydride. We've incorporated many new technologies in the hydrogen house that go along with conserving the planet. This hose is connected to an ozonator by my washing machine. I can get ozonated water out of it, and that super cleans clothes. It disinfects 300 times more powerful than bleach. Anything I can do with propane or, or natural gas, we're doing with hydrogen. Hydrogen is safe. It's safer than gasoline, diesel fuel, propane, natural gas, because it's lighter than air. Because there's no oxygen in the tank, it can't react without oxygen. So shooting bullets or putting fire, nothing's gonna happen. Hydrogen won't ignite without having oxygen. This jewel box here does solar hydrogen. So this is my hydrogen house in a box. You drop this on the top of a mountain, you drop it in the desert, it works. The equipment here's already been here for 16 years. My lawnmower runs on hydrogen, my motorcycle, my ATV. I have a hydrogen car here that I built in 2000, and the maintenance is very minimal. These are the two hydrogen fuel cells. We took the show motor out of this, the Yamaha motor. We put in two hydrogen fuel cell stacks. This car has a 104 horsepower electric motor, which is out of a bus. So this car is enormously fast. So you're looking at the ability to outrun a Corvette in the quarter mile. The cars that they're driving in California, the one I have here, the Toyota Mirai, every tank full in the Toyota Mirai is 12 gallons of water, drinkable water. We drove from Malibu to Vegas and back, and I stopped in Death Valley and I drank the water from the tailpipe. The car is super fast because it has no uh, batteries in it. This is not the future, this is now. We are now at the very beginning of the learning curve with this technology. We have to do things differently if we expect a different result. Hydrogen has to be made from renewables, from organics and biomass. Right now, the world's hydrogen is all made from virgin fossil fuel, from natural gas with no carbon capture. A lot of new methods are gonna come out in the next couple of years for making hydrogen cheaper and renewable, and that really is the holy grail. My wish, my hope, my dream is that the hydrogen house project no longer becomes needed because it is mainstream. That means I succeeded in my life's work to heal the planet. I'm Michael, this is my hydrogen house, and there's no place like home.